Well, Michael ends by saying that I drive a hundred thousand dollar car, and so that should my focus should not be on the sexuality of people. Well, your whole job is about getting funds from the aberration of other people. And you think that you have a moral right to talk about something that's a law? I mean, I mean, I mean. Listen, Michael, Michael, Michael. You reference, you reference all persons. You reference Article 17. I, I've, I've said to you on this platform already this evening. Don't read the Constitution in bits. Article 17.4. Michael, let me give you an education, please. Article 17.4. The Article 17 that you say says all persons. Go and read 17.4. I've told you, don't read the constitution in bits. Read it as a whole. Article 17.4 says, Nothing in this article that you have referred to shall prevent parliament from enacting laws that are reasonable, necessary to provide A, for the implementation of policies and programs aimed at redressing social, economic, or educational imbalance in the Ghanaian society. When you have people who are born with six fingers, it is not considered, or six digits, it's not considered the norm, because it's a one in a million occurrence. The fact that you have individuals who choose on their own to carry out what society does not consider normal, does not mean that we must make it normal. And that is an educational and societal imbalance that parliament has rightfully passed the law under article 17.4 to deal with. When also read article 39, the cultural imperatives that have been imposed on the state. So read the constitution as a whole and don't read it in bits and pieces. And Amanda makes the point that I should go and look at what informs the statistics. Ah, Amanda, you are saying that people's aberration, their, 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 ab uh, their abhorrent sexual preferences makes them suicidal because they need help and you think that we should now accept that aberrant behavior that 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 abhorrent practice and now have to deal with giving them why is it because you think that that will open a room for you to now do research uh, 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 um, a reliable partner on this journey for three years you've given us the opportunity to clarify portions of the bill that had been intentionally and maliciously twisted by opponents of the bill. And so we consider you our greatest ally in this journey. Going forward with the public sensitization, we would still depend on the media. However, we realized that the latest spin had been focused on clause 10 and 11 of the bill, which dealt with the propagation, advocacy of support for the prohibited acts under the bill. And the latest spin had been that we were introducing, reintroducing criminal libel law, and even media houses could no longer have editorials on the subject matter. And so we decided to say that, look, for the avoidance of doubt, we'll put it inside of the bill, that this is subject to the 1992 constitution, because the sponsors of the bill, we, re we respect the chapter 12 rights that the media has, the freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. But the media is also guided by ethics. There's a difference between editorials and advocacy. Editorials are informative and educative. Yeah. Advocacy are opinionated. And so for us, we don't have a problem. And that's why we introduced that these provisions are subject or subject to the provisions of the constitution that phrase was introduced so that all the things in clause 10 and 11 are subject to the constitution article chapter chapter 12 of the of the of the of the constitution that deals with the freedoms of the media okay. article 162 i believe and all that gives you the freedom to express yourself however those freedoms are guided by your ethics okay. and that's why you would not advocate for something that is a criminal offense that's why you would do um Joy, for example, before we started the show, you could have chosen to do an editorial on money laundry mm -hmm. or anti-terrorism, but your editorial will stop short of advocating for those things. Okay. And that's the simple point. Yeah. I mean. um, okay, so I think that we we have three categories of offenses, or four actually, four categories of offenses in the bill. Category one is where we criminalize the acts on of homosexuality, lesbianism, gays, transgenders, and all of that. That is 
is is considered if you're found guilty by a competent court of jurisdiction you can be subjected to a fine of i think not less than 750 penalty units okay and not more than 2000 penalty units i think or a jail sentence or custodial sentence of six months minimum maximum three years or depending on the facts before the court a combination of both so that's one offense the second group of offenses are for persons who propagate okay advocate and spread the criminal offense of homosexuality because it's been criminalized by the act okay. now even that is broken now into two categories those who the general who do the general and those who do targeted at children persons under the age of 18. now that comes with a, 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 a prison sentence of a minimum of five years and a maximum of 10 years okay. then you also have persons who fund willingly fund such prohibited activities mm. they also have a punishment that is five years to ten years then you have a fourth category of persons who carry out extrajudicial treatment mm. who because there's a duty to report that if you see this you report to lawful authority we've defined lawful authority to include traditional rulers members of parliament and all of those now you either report to them but if you fail to do that and you carry out extrajudicial treatment, mm -hmm. that's where people lynch persons. You can go to jail for between six months and three years. Okay. So the bill itself takes care of extrajudicial. So those are the four various regimes that I readily remember uh, are stated in the bill. Mm. Uh, let me bring in Michael Akako. The attempt by any of the advocacy human rights coalition to say we are funding, we are pushing for homosexual acts to be legalized. We have never said that. We have argued on the basis that rights are the cornerstone of our democracy. And as such, if the Constitution, which some judge himself in 2015 had sat on the panel on the, on the, on the television program, and has justified why he didn't think LGBT people need to be criminalized and why he believes that the Constitution is sacrosanct when it comes to the issues of rights. I don't want to have that one where to see some judge that. Um, but, uh, it's quite unfortunate that we have to get to this place where we are today. Um, I'll just say that for now. Well, doc, Dr. Um, Odo, you, you want to respond to that? I'll All give you, I'll give you the opportunity to that. do that. Let me uh, hear from uh, Dr. Amanda Odoi. We wish a group come together to make um, a claim or, or push for an agenda. And it, it's informed by, by research. It's informed by activities. It's informed by data. And then there's self-advocacy. So LGBT persons could have done a self-advocacy. But our group moves beyond self-advocacy to look at the impact of this bill on the group, on the society. So we've sat down, and that's, that's the sad aspect of it, that we've sat down and a group of people with a particular interest have pushed for a law that affects the entire country. So we have a, a bill or a, a law which has not been assented yet that talks about the fact that if um, same-sex relationships, it's um, in our sex or any forms of unwanted sexual activity as they have defined in the law, it's just limited to queer persons. But then when anal sex, which can be detrimental to the health, as, as they are claiming, also to women when they are forced to have anal sex in heterosexual relationships. But we are saying that, well, with the power in our hands, we can discriminate against a certain gender whilst we give certain limitations to a certain group. We also have um, instances where um, people's lives are going to be monitored. So at first, Queer people have lived with us. Actually, there's evidence to show that queer people have always lived with us. We have gone to school. The reasons why we have um, norms and practices in our schools which had sanctions around um, these relationships is the fact that they have always been with us and we thought that we should be regulated. But with the start of this bill, 
and the discussions around it, hostility has increased against the community to the extent that even non-queer persons who exhibit effeminate characteristics are right now tagged. You go to the job place, your movement is monitored. People are discriminated against. An employer can decide that because you exhibit effeminate characteristics, I cannot take you or employ you in my job just in case I am tagged for employing somebody that is queer. Because by walking about, I do not claim to be a queer person. You will never know. If you never catch me and act, you can never know. This has implications for people's livelihoods, people's economic participation, people's engagement in education. Now we are saying that institution, academic institutions must out all students who are assumed or perceived or are found to be queer. You are denying them right to education. There is equal access to education that must be for everyone. And this has implications for the, for the lives of these young women, young men that will have to go to school. It has implications for employers. You are saying that the, the client's doctor confidentiality, if you're a doctor and you, come, you have a client coming to you and it tells you that, well, I am queer and because of this and that, I need this kind of um, services, I must be ousted. And it has implications for brain drain. We've realized that in most countries, people who feel that they, they, they are being targeted are leaving. There are a lot of us, if, if nobody tells you that they are care, you will not know. So there are skilled people we have trained that may have to leave this country at this point because they do not feel safe. And these are the economic issues that we are raising. And the fact that this bill does not only apply to queer people, and we are at risk. As a parent, you have to, you have to give up your child. You have to report your child who is found to be cared. And this child may be the breadwinner of the family. What do you do as a pastor or as a priest? If, a, if somebody comes to you and comes to confess, now you have to, you have to um, report that person. So what are the, the mental stress, the torture we are going to take? A lot of people who are not necessarily care through these phases has implication. Which then, and some of the words that are being used also, for example, if you're saying that promotion, promotion is subjective as an academic. My specialization is in sexualities, and as part of sexualities, I do LGBT studies. As public health um, workers, we need to talk about some risk, even around sex sexualities, and it may include talking about care people and some of the support that they will need. It is for the good of the country and for us to be able to look at the various groups, their needs, and how to meet them so that it does not become a problem. At this point, it is going to be very difficult to engage in such conversations. And you are saying that who willingly funds research peace policy? Research fees the betterment of the lives of people. So if I get funding and to research on care issues, and there's implication. If I make known that I'm researching into this field, I'm looking for these kind of people to talk to, there's implication. So you're indirectly restricting production of knowledge, participation, and empowerment of people and how to engage their lives. And these are the things we're saying is dangerous. If we already have a law that says that if you engage in a certain sexual act, you are going to be arrested. Why do we have to create new ones that has to affect an entire population, a whole country, and limit the rights, the voices of people and the ability to engage and redefine laws to suit and the redefinition of laws which has implications for other groups such as genders, such as women, and how they can engage even in sexual relations in their bedroom. Sam George is here. And also if I'm, a, if I'm a mother and I go into a hotel with a, uh, with a daughter or I'm from a friend and we want to stay in a hotel as two females, right now when you're booking a hotel you have to call and then uh, presumably the hotel has to ask you, are you going to be two females living in a room? Are you here? All these restrictions, all this discomfort that are coming with it are things that we, we think that we should have paid attention to. Sam, we push for Sam George uh, wants to react. You want to react to uh, Michael and then uh, Dr. Odoi. First and foremost, I appreciated that Michael, if he was going to make reference to the video from me on uh, my Majority Caucus on Joy News. Mm should not have just listened to a 60 second clipping that's been put out, but listen to, requested Joy FM to give him the full tape. I spoke in context, so Michael, go get the context and understand it fine. Now, secondly, when you say that people have rights, and I mean, Mike, we had this conversation on Newsfile about two weeks ago. I gave you a simple homework. I expected that you would do better this time. I asked you two weeks ago on Newsfile, to show me what part of the constitution of Ghana, the 1992 constitution, gives people rights based on sexual preferences. You can't just come on national TV and say that people have rights. Rights are defined in Ghana's constitution. And this also deals with the misinformation put out by Dr. Amanda Odoi. Rights are defined in the constitution. Even the right to life 
can and will be curtailed by the state on certain grounds and bases. All the rights in the 1992 Constitution are premised on the fact that they are not injurious to public safety, public health, and public morality. It is clear that the proponents of this pro-LGBTQ agenda read the Constitution in bits and pieces and omit certain parts. Because if you read the 1992 Constitution that you say gives you rights or gives the people you advocate for rights, did you read the Constitution to realize that rights can be curtailed on the basis of public morality? And do you understand what morality and public morality is? Do you understand what public health is? Dr. Manda Odoi admits that in the course of their work, they have to deal with people who are at risk because of their sexual activities. And you don't think that that constitutes public health? And again, the misinformation. I, I don't know if she's referring to the bill that myself and my colleagues have altered. But you see, people have created their own impression of the bills and are, are fostering their misinformation and miseducation on people. First and foremost, I mean, several of the claims she's made here that you can't go and apply for a job. Why? When you're going to apply for a job, does anybody ask you who you slept with in your bedroom? Am I the one asking LGBTQ practitioners to define themselves by their sexuality? What happens in the confine of your bedroom remains the business of you and your partner. Nobody's coming into your bedroom to find out what's going on. But when you decide to define yourself by what is supposed to be your private sexual preference, then it becomes a matter of public policy. And public policy will apply to it. And if this is all about funding for you, I am more interested in the sanctity of Ghanaian children and not the funds that you receive to do what you claim is academic research. You travel to countries like Qatar. Some of you travel to Qatar. Some of you travel to Saudi Arabia. And when you go there, you abide by the laws there. You just showed Nigeria. Nigeria's punishment is 15 years. Yet they go to Nigeria, they go to these countries and respect the law there. But think that Ghana should become a jungle because we think that we are yes, Yesuatra, because we think that we are so liberal. The Americans who are funding you, in American states, they are taking legis passing legislation to curb LGBTQ. Two days ago, Tennessee passed legislation in his house that banned the, the flying of even the flags. They've not just banned the activity. You can't even fly the flags in public schools right now. They're protecting their children. And so what they are rejecting in their own countries, you, have, you want to come and impose it here. In the United States, 27 out of their 50 states have laws that, that ban one form in one form or the other LGBTQ. That's more than 50% of their states. And yet you want to paint a picture that you are so academic. How academic are you? Are you, are you the places you are getting the funding from, in their own home, home countries, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is pointing out that homosexuality makes a person 400 times, a homosexual person is 400 times more likely to abuse substance and be, and, and be an alcoholic and be a drug abuser than a heterosexual person. And it constitutes a health crisis. A homosexual person is 400 times more suicidal than a heterosexual person. Not me, the CDC. It says that a person, a man who has sex with another man, is 400 times more likely to get HIV AIDS than a heterosexual man. And you think that this is something that we should allow you advocate for in the name of academic freedoms? Well, rights are definite. And I'll be glad for you to go and test the law in court and show to the courts what rights you are defending. And you see, let me just wrap up with this, Aisha, because I'm sure you want to bring in a few other people. It's extremely important that we understand that in this country, nobody is marginalizing any group of people. And Michael makes that point, that why do we need this law? Because you have Section 104 of the Criminal Offenses Act. Well, maybe, Michael, you should go and read the Attorney General's memo to Parliament. In that memo, the Attorney General actually applauded us because section 104 if you read section 104 in light of the supreme court's ruling in banosin versus the republic 2014 where natural canal knowledge is defined by our supreme court you realize that section 104 is discriminatory because it cannot apply to lesbians because it talks about penetration and les lesbians do not have a natural organ for penetration and so the Attorney General is unable to prosecute any female engaged in lesbianism under Section 104. And so when you have a law that is 1960, 
which at the time was dealing with what was the known form of homosexuality and today you have transgenders you have all kinds of of, of insane perversions being bandied around as lifestyles and we are making our laws representative of it you say, why are we doing that? Mm. I mean, I, mean it, I just want you to elaborate more on this, how this would actually uh, lead to or bring back uh, criminal, uh, criminal libel law. Okay, thank you. But before then, I would want to respond to a few issues that some judge raised. Um, there's one thing that I think he has made clear. This is not the first place he's mentioned that, but using statistics from CDD. There's a reason why there are numbers. So I think he has to go beyond looking at the numbers that I'm mentioning to look at the reasons behind, behind the reason why queer persons are more likely to be suicidal than heterosexual persons because they lack support. There's no support. And that is one of the things we are doing to them right now. So right now, if anybody is going through a problem, they don't have any outlet to go seek support. But as a, as a heterosexual person, you can just go out there and talk to any doctor and then you are okay. So these are some of the reasons why those statistics speak to the higher numbers when it comes to issues of mental health and suicide amongst that community. So he has to go and look beyond the numbers and speak to the issues be that that are informing the numbers that are being put out there. Also, I think he has to consider the fact that sexual risk is not limited to queer, queer, queer community. There are sexual risks even among heterosexuals. Heterosexuals that engage in anal sex are also a public health risk. So if you are looking at that, saying that this is just a, a, a small a group and then if we hold their practices, we save public health, you are opening up a number of people. If we are saying that heterosexual community in Ghana is, is bigger, you are opening up a number of women who are being exposed to heterosexual, to a number of uh, to, uh, sex, uh, anal sex, to a number of uh, sexual health risks that we have to pay attention to. And nobody is saying that we cannot have rights, whether as, as, a, as a bigger group as small group, we are saying that we have to pay attention to the issues at hand. And those are some of the issues that Michael was raising. And, his, and he may also mentioned the fact that who ask of your sexual preferences. Nobody needs to ask. Sandra, you need to pay attention to the actions and the, the hostility that is coming out out of this bill. Now you just have to have effeminate characteristics and everybody assumes that you're queer because that is the image that we have put out there about who queer persons are. But we have a number of queer persons who may not even exhibit such traits and they are not at risk. I did a research and, it's, and I looked at homophobic violence in Ghana, when and where it counts. And it counts when people actually tend to think that if you have effeminate characteristics, then automatically you're queer. So people that are not even in the community are at risk right now and they are being targeted so you don't have to be asked by your boss to be able to, for them to for them to be able to say that okay you're here we have people that make posts and just bear the mere fact that they are men and exhibiting those streets people already tag them as gay and that has consequences so they don't need to be asked if that is the case then we don't even need to criminalize because nobody will have to know what we do in our bedroom do we know what you do in your bedroom with your partner no we don't come to ask so we assume that everything is perfect and you are okay we don't know the kind of dangerous sex that may be happening in people's bedrooms even a heterosexual and then with the media you mentioned his opening statement that he assumed that the media is an ally you are gagging the media straight away saying that it's either they align with parliament on this bill or that's it they cannot support but the media is there to be a voice to the people put out issues that are detrimental so that we can engage them as a society and find solutions to them. You don't just go as the media and say that ally, ally for which reason? To promote something that we think is detrimental. One way the media is going to have issues is the fact that if they are pressing issues that you're supposed to raise in the media concerning um, LGBT issues, now it's going to be very difficult because promotion is subjective once again, as I say. Talking about LGBT issues may come with a different reason for which the media is reporting. Whatever somebody does with that information, you can never tell. But then you can be assumed that by the mere fact that you are publishing certain, certain news items, certain activities on your news item, then it means that you are liable. Right now, the media, the media outlets cannot show certain movies that are supposed to be having clear um, perspective. But for all you know, the content of that media item you're showing could be speaking to an issue that may be raised in this bill for whatever reason, but you cannot promote them anymore. And these are the things that we're saying that needs to be needs to be addressed and these are things we need to pay attention to. What mm -hmm. I find surprising is that we are not going to regulate what people share on their social media outlets. What people info what information people put out there. So if I find out that somebody um there's a care committee, so I can just make a post, oh look at these people. And then it's two men probably engaging in hugging or something. And then automatically I could be attacked for promoting fairness. But it could never be. It could be two friends. It could be two siblings hugging and, and, and showing affection. And that's it. That has consequences. So this is the extent to which we are trying to limit 
and, and, and curtail ab ability to be able to pass on information and be held criminally liable for certain things that might not even be intended. Mm. Michael, so the law has been passed. So what next? Well, um, uh, Aisha, so I, I wanted to just go back a little bit to something some judge has said about the Constitution. You see, I like to ground my argumentation in the Constitution. And just like I did tell some judge the last time we engaged, I told him that the Constitution is a neutral document. And it's for this very reason. That is why when the Constitution says religion, it doesn't prescribe for us what religion we should have. And when the Constitution says gender, it doesn't prescribe for us to determine what gender that is. But I just want to take him back to something he has said. That if I look in the Constitution, which part of the Constitution guarantees that people who identify as they want to identify should be uh, um, uh, is, uh, is, is part of the constitutional uh, makeup. So this idea of, or I'll call it this, this, this undaunted operative uh, uh, thinking, which is operating on the fact that, you see, sometimes because we are heterosexual, and because we've never questioned heterosexuality since we have been born. So we're taking it for granted that it is what is supposed to be for every society. The point I'm trying to make is that the Constitution does not discriminate. And I've said it so many times, that in matter of fact, there's no reason why we should even be having this conversation of LGBT rights. Because when the Constitution says all persons, it means all persons. It doesn't create a, it doesn't create separate categories of persons. It says all persons. So when you're making the constitutional argument to cause uh, or to sanction the discrimination of a, a population of the country, we have to be very careful. Like I said, I I'm a firm believer in rights. And I will go to bat for any person whose rights are being infringed on, whether they are gay, whether they are lesbian, whether they are uh, from their tribal life, whether they are minoritized on any other ground, I will defend their rights to be who they are. So we need to make the clear distinction. As I said, if you want to prescribe the act, if you feel like the act is what you want to prescribe, then make the law to do that. But the idea that, should I say that I am I'm gay? Should I hold out that I'm gay? And automatically, I should be arrested. And uh, even if you look at the, uh, the duty to report, I'm supposed to report to assemblymen, MPs. Uh, which part of our, uh, uh, um, uh, how do you call it? Which, which, part, which part of our, our, judicial, uh, our, our police system Reporting system have an MP to be reported to. What is the MP going to do? You know, we have so it's many busy, problems in this country to be worried about. And to think that this is what is important for us. I mean, that's a story state for our republic. It is a really story state for our republic that in this moment of economic crisis, in this moment when people cannot afford to keep a single bill on the table to eat. But we, our political leaders who we've elected, who are running a $100,000 car, think that it is the sexuality of what people do in their bedroom that they should concern about. It's a story state for our republic. Well, well, Michael ends by saying that I drive a $100,000 car, and so that should, my focus should not be on the sexuality of people. Well, your whole job is about getting funds from the aberration of other people and you think that you have a moral right to talk about something that's a law i mean i mean i mean listen michael 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 you reference you reference all persons you reference article 17. I, I've, I've said to you on this platform already this evening don't read the constitution in bits article 17 4. michael let me give you an education please article 17 4 the article 17 that you say says all persons Go and read 17.4. I've told you, don't read the constitution in bits. Read it as a whole. Article 17.4 says, 
nothing in this article that you have referred to shall prevent parliament from enacting laws that are reasonable necessary to provide a for the implementation of policies and programs aimed at redressing social economic or educational imbalance in the Ghanaian society when you have people who are born with six fingers it is not considered or six digits is not considered the norm because it's a one in a million occurrence the fact that you have individuals who choose on their own to carry out what society does not consider normal does not mean that we must make it normal and that is an educational and societal imbalance that parliament has rightfully passed the law under article 17.4 to deal with when also read article 39 the cultural imperatives that have been imposed on the state so read the constitution as a whole and don't read it in bits and pieces and amanda makes the point that i should go and look at what informs the statistics ah amanda you are saying that people's aberration their their their, ab uh, their abhorrent sexual preferences makes them suicidal because they need help and you think that we should now accept that aberrant behavior that 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 abhorrent practice and now have to deal with giving them why is it because you think that that will open a room for you to now do research but listen people do research today into pedophilia people do research into money laundering people do research into all kinds of vices it doesn't mean they have to advocate for it the moment you begin to equate advocacy to research you've missed the point amanda that can never be the basis of research research can never be equated to advocacy and the moment you do that i see you've lost the plot <laughs> okay so the point we'll make here is this amnesty international and you see another point amanda makes that she's seen a rise in violence i challenge you amanda and you see we did this when we had the open session for all of these allies to come into parliament and appear before parliament we asked them for evidence evidence of either a job or, or or a hotel or any discrimination against a person wrongfully so none of them could produce an evidence on this show i'm calling amanda out and saying she should give us one instance one of increased violence against a person because of this bill mm. look uh, it's easy to it's easy to say the things you are saying but trust me so long as god gives me breath i will continue to hold all of you to strict proof because it is clear that the intent behind all of this advocacy is economic <laughs> Aisha, let us let us call people out it is economic it's about the funding they will receive do you, do the funding you, you proof, receive you have proof oh, absolutely cdd is sponsored no cdd's research and michael is here cdd's research on this bill was not funded from their own it was funded by donor partners who have an interest in pushing lgbtq you should deny it amanda's research is sponsored by groups that are pro lgbtq don't deny this. This, it, it, this is it, fact. It, it, so if hard. people are thinking about the money they get for their research and for that, they think that parliament should sit down for the innocence of our children to be taken away. Why are we going as a country? In terms of accent, uh, uh, they should state the source of your funding. Okay, I'm challenging you to state the source of your funding. Michael, Michael, give me a second. I'll, I'll come to you too. All right. So go ahead and respond in one minute, please. This very state, this very Ghana state we live in today right who i mean where are we who, who is funding us today so, so you are not disputing that you are funded by groups that are interested in lgbtq you are not you are not disputing it because we need to call the cdd out on this let him the cdd respond. does fantastic let work let but on this matter you, you we'll call you, you ask him to you deny or confess yes. so he's doing that so, so, michael go ahead the state that some judge is a minister is that a member of parliament for is it not being funded partly by donors? So what is she talking about funding? And then you mean go back to the parliament is funded by donors? No, what's the point he made? To go back to the constitutional argument he made. Look. No, he should, Aisha, let's not run away from your source of funding. Michael, let's establish it. You've not answered my question. Are you funded or not? Michael, can you give him a direct answer? On Are that? you funded or not by pro LGBTQ groups? Allow him to respond. He's not answered the question. He says yes. 
but no one funder has given us money to go and and uh, 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 to go out on the limit advocate for men to go sleep with men. And I have, we have said that disclaimer so many times.